raw milk straight from the cow. No processing, no pasteurization, just this nutrient-packed white liquid. Wait, that's not true. That's not what I believe. But if that is what you believe, I want to challenge your assumption in this video by showing that raw foods are not always better for you than processed foods. And raw milk is actually a great example of this. Raw milk enthusiasts love to claim that this untouched liquid has superior nutrition compared to any type of milk you could buy in the grocery store. And I've heard every myth about this. It has more protein, better protein, extra minerals, more vitamins, like you name it, I have heard it. And this argument really comes back to what does pasteurization do to raw milk? And I have another video on this you might wanna check out. It talks about pasteurization and homogenization. Just quickly remember that pasteurization is this processing step that heats raw milk to a specific time and temperature to eliminate all human pathogens. Because again, pasteurization does not kill all microorganisms, just the harmful ones. But let's get back to what does pasteurization do to various nutrients in the milk. First, let's tackle minerals. Pasteurization doesn't cause any change in the concentration of minerals. This is like calcium and phosphorus. These, this is like trying to kill like a rock. It's, it's different than a microorganism, which is like a living organism. These minerals are incredibly heat stable. There's no difference before or after pasteurization. Of course, we need to talk about proteins because a lot of people, including me, drink milk for the good amount of protein it has. And the majority of protein in milk comes from casein. About 80% of the protein is this casein protein. Now, this is actually a very unique protein. Caseins don't have a lot of like structure. They're like very flexible and free flowing. And this means that even when they're subjected to high heat, they do not denature. And what I mean by denature is this act of unfolding and losing the protein's original structure. And this is what happens sometimes if there's too much heat, too much pressure, the protein loses its structure. Now casein, because it's this really unique protein actually, it does not denature like other proteins normally do. In fact, you can heat casein in milk at 140 Celsius for over an hour and still nothing happens to it. And that is a really brutal, harsh heat treatment. Pasteurization is way more mild than that heat treatment. The other protein in milk is known as whey, and this is about 20% of the protein in milk. And pasteurization causes a very minor portion of the whey, less than 7% to denature. But this doesn't affect the protein's digestion in any way. It doesn't affect the protein's quality. And in fact, with many proteins, actually, if they are denatured in food processing, this increases the digestibility because remember, denature means like the protein unfurls and opens up. And when we then eat those proteins, it's easier for our digestive enzymes, the juices to actually attack and digest and break down those proteins. So yes, there's a very minor level of whey protein that denatures, but it doesn't affect the quality of the food in any way. Vitamins, so let's look at vitamins next. If you look at the label, you will see that milk has a good amount of vitamins A, and if you buy vitamin D milk, vitamin D, and also it has a good amount of vitamin B2, which is called riboflavin. Now vitamins A and E, these are fat soluble vitamins, and these are actually added after pasteurization during processing, meaning the milk is fortified in these vitamins. We add them in to prevent any uh, human diseases or malnutrition. So these do not change before or after processing. Back to vitamin B2 or riboflavin. So this is a water soluble vitamin, but studies have shown that it's incredibly heat stable and that the concentration doesn't change before or after heat treatment with pasteurization. However, pasteurization can cause very minor losses. We're talking uh, less than 10% of vitamins like vitamin C, vitamin B9, B12, B6, and B1. Of these vitamins, only B12 is in a high enough amount that there could be a claim on the milk that it is a good source of B12. 
all the other vitamins I just listed are in such small amounts that they never have a significant impact on human health in the first place. And I know you might be thinking, well, a loss of even less than 10% of vitamins, well, that sounds like a lot, but here are a bunch of other factors that actually make more of a difference. This includes the type of packaging material, light exposure, the storage time, the storage temperature, these all lead to larger losses of nutrients than pasteurization. And remember to weigh these minor losses against getting a bacterial infection and sick or making your kids or your family sick. If you would like to learn more, next I would check out my video on why milk is pasteurized and homogenized.